Happening now at 5, the accused movie theater shooter breaking down in front of a packed courtroom today. Tonight, we're taking action for you with live team coverage of the closely watched movie theater shooting case. Let's get straight out to Ashley Glass live outside the Dade City Courthouse. A lot happening in court today, Ashley. And one of the first big decisions, Linda, coming down from the judge today, the issue of whether or not we, the media, would get to see that, that, that video from inside the movie theater showing the moments Chad Olson was shot and killed. The judge deciding today that, yes, that surveillance video will be played in open court, though it has not been yet. Also an issue today, this is a bond hearing for Curtis Reeves going on hour seven now. The judge weighing out many factors and trying to decide whether or not to grant Curtis Reeves bond leading up to his trial. And it has been a compelling day of testimony. Seeming very agitated, talking to himself. A judge deciding on bond for Curtis Reeves and hearing from an eyewitness first. Charles Cummings telling the court he was there the moment Chad Olson was shot and killed in a Pasco movie theater, allegedly at the hands of Reeves, a retired police captain after an argument over texting. Cummings says he sat same row as Chad and Nicole Olson. Olson had, a, had had enough. I saw popcorn going into the air, but I cannot tell you who threw the popcorn. An argument coming says escalated. There was a bright flash and a gun went off. He said, I can't believe he shot me. He took another step and a half and then he collapsed on my son. Reeves sitting still, unemotional, hearing Cummings recount the afternoon of January 13th inside Theater 10. Row after row of supporters at his back, only breaking and sobbing into a tissue in hearing his daughter testify to a loving father and someone with too many ties to the community, family and other, to be considered a flight risk should the judge grant bond. When my husband told me that he didn't want to be married to me anymore, the first person I called was my dad. And Curtis Reeves' daughter, who you just heard from there, one of many supporters in the courtroom today in support of Curtis Reeves. My colleague Eric Waxler here now to pick up that aspect of the story. Yeah, we were basically surrounded by them. Many of them wrote letters. I have a stack of them here that were given to the judge. We're also getting a good idea of how the defense plans to present Reeves when this case does eventually go to trial. Range. For the first time, we are seeing Curtis Reeves like we've never seen him before. Breaking down, he put his head in his hands as his daughter talked about the birth of Reeves' only grandchild. It was quite the blessing when my daughter was born and she was healthy. And it was a very emotional time for my whole family. Most of the day, he was stoic, walking into a Dade City courtroom neatly dressed, wearing khaki pants, a tie, and a red sweater vest. But when he showed up, he had no restraints on of any kind. This uh, practice of him not being in hand restraints and black box is against our general orders. Captain Mike Farantelli told the judge the sheriff's office position on how Reeves should be restrained, but the judge overruled them. And this is something that we would normally do for any person charged with that level of crime. Therefore, we object to him not being in handcuffs and shackles. When we first saw Curtis Reeves January 13th, he was in a white jumpsuit being escorted out of the movie theater. The next day at his first appearance before a judge, the 71-year-old retired Tampa cop wore a protective vest. Legal expert Jeffrey Schwartz was in court this morning watching Reeves every move with us. He says he's not surprised with the defense's early strategy. I think that uh, clearly they're trying to portray him as a typical 71-year-old retiree. And right now we are still waiting to see if the judge will grant bond in this case and if that surveillance video from inside the theater will be shown. Stay with us as our team coverage continues. And also coming up at 6 o'clock, you'll hear more from Reeves' daughter and get a lot of insight into what the family life was like inside their home. Live in Dade City, Eric Waxler, ABC Action News. Eric, thank you. And we are just finding out that the shooting victim's widow, Nicole Olson, will be appearing on The View tomorrow. You can watch that right here on your ABC Action News station. The show starts at 11 o'clock, just before ABC Action News at noon. And our coverage of this huge case isn't over. Look for updates throughout this hour and more live coverage coming up at 6.